Well, sometimes that is better. The person you put up there ain't the person that comes back. <laughs> it's that song to get down with. About six feet under. Get down. Ooh, I love this song. Now we come to the thrilling final episode of our radio drama. Hello and welcome to episode 156 of the Rotten Views podcast. But, like always, unless you have this on autoplay, you already know that. And you already know the movie at hand that we're going to be discussing today. It's early in the morning. I'm not going to lie, it's really early in the morning right now. So hopefully this podcast does well and I don't, uh, you know, sound stupid. But yes, for episode 156, we are watching... uh, my first time watch for me as well I, i'm gonna add uh it's called unlawful entry from 1992 it's an hour and 51 minutes it's a crime drama thriller uh the description as read on tubi because you can watch this for free on tubi i highly recommend downloading that app if you guys haven't already uh the responding lapd officer to a home invasion becomes the burger lies school's worst nightmare when he grows increasingly obsessed with wife karen oh no it's a karen oh god but before we go too far into the movie uh this for the people who don't really stay to the end of the podcast episode and if you don't i understand it's fine no hard feelings just a little heartbroken it's fine uh yeah definitely make sure to check us out on all social medias i don't know why i said us it's only me it's just me that does this there's nobody else that helps me at all so yes make sure to follow at typhon sign on all social media platforms we got the facebook page we have um the twitter x page we have threads we have instagram we have tiktok and the main thing that i say each and every week that we're pushing like, is slowly growing each and every week it's the youtube channel where you can see weekly uh, gaming videos that come out every wednesday we have the various shorts that come out I, i'm wanting to do them every other day or every day to be honest with you but i've been slacking a little bit it's been a busy couple weeks here so hopefully we'll get back on track uh, this week coming up should be a little bit more relaxed i'm hoping so i hopefully will be able to get ahead of a few things but we won't hold our breath on but you can also listen to old episodes of the podcast podcast as well that we're adding a little little uh like video feature to it uh, nothing major by any means but we will be having video podcasts uh, at some point in time i just gotta work out all the kinks right now to be honest with you um because it just seems like there's a new issue every every week that comes up but that's that's fine that's just technology for you it's ever changing and ever you know being weird after every freaking update but whatever it is what it is you guys aren't here to listen to me blab about how uh, um you know technology sucks uh but also make sure to also follow the uh, twitch page because we or twitch channel i should say uh because we've been playing some games on there we've been playing a little bit of fortnite we've been playing a little bit of texas chainsaw massacre so we're going to keep doing that um i want to try and do that maybe three or four times a week but we'll see uh i'll try and air out a schedule and get that all uploaded i'm also going to do like a total rebrand and redesign of the twitch page like the descriptions and all that kind of fun stuff all the banners and whatnot you can add and some emotes and whatnot so that's and everything that's on the list as well and we got a bunch of new artwork coming out uh sadly this week alone we have lost uh two wrestlers uh, if you guys didn't know i'm a wrestling fan i do wrestling uh posters for various promotions i just do wrestling drawings in general uh so we got a couple new wrestling drawings that are eventually going to be coming out uh for the late terry funk as well as uh bray wyatt um so hopefully this weekend i will be able to work on those ones i'm not too sure on that but we're going to try and push for them both to be done monday so they don't just like sit around on the desk too long um but yeah enough of that you guys are here to listen to me talk about a movie for some godly reason. i don't know why but i appreciate it that you guys come back each and every week so let's get into this movie a hand let's discuss it a little bit as always um before i do get into the movie i'm going to be talking about the movie from start to finish so if there's you know stuff you don't want to be spoiled on for a movie that came out in 1992. Uh, feel free to pause the podcast now. Go download that Tubi app or just watch it for free. Uh, you don't even need to create an account. Just go 
go on tubi.com and you can watch the movie with commercials of course um but yeah i'm going to be talking about it a lot so if you don't want to be spoiled uh, that's on you uh as for this movie it's got 6.4 out of 10 on imdb 74 percent of rotten tomatoes and 4.4 out of 5 on amazon.ca 85 percent of google users like this movie my initial release date was june 26 1992 uh directed by jonathan Kaplan, uh, distributed by 20th Century Fox and Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. It had a budget of $23 million and had a box office of $57.1 million uh, American. And then, uh, yeah, director is, like I said, John Kaplan. Kaplan, I believe this is the right proper name. Uh, he's best known for White Line Fever from uh, 1975, where he was the director. Uh, he also known as The Accused from 1988. But the thing that probably he's known best for is he was a producer of this TV show called ER from 1997 to 2006 where he did 198 episodes of that uh and then we have one of the writers is uh george Put- putnam putnam uh probably best known for his work on the tv series nypd blue from 1993 to 1999 where he did 93 episodes and then the other thing is he was also on night or worked for the script and continuity department for 19 episodes of deadwood and then his other thing is unlawful entry but with that being said we're just gonna jump right into the movie at hand and we're gonna get this ball rolling. Um, I'm also very excited about this one because it's starring, as I said last week, starring Kurt Russell and Ray Liotta. Uh, the late Ray Liotta, who I believe just passed away either earlier this year or maybe it was late last year. Uh, I love uh, love him. He's a great actor. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to watching Hubie's Halloween again with him in it uh, later this year for uh, Halloween. Baby. Presents Saturday Night at the Movies, the television series which each week brings you the finest in recent motion pictures. Tonight... Watch a man come into my own home, attack my own wife, and I can't do anything about it. I'm never gonna be in that position again. Oh, Michael. Hey. You remember Officer Davis, too? Oh, yeah. How you doing? And I didn't recognize you. You had a uniform. Hey, I'm gonna make sure that your block's patrolled all night long. Would you like to go get a cup of coffee? You're safe with me. I'm a cop, remember? What's going on? What the hell are you talking about? You and Pete. He wants you. He thinks you want him. We're staying away from this guy. You got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. How do I get a cop off my back? Here it is, 5,000. You walk away and don't mess with my wife. Bribe Mikey, call whatever you want, Pete. I don't know what's going on with Michael. He's losing it. This guy's a decorated officer you're accusing. I don't care how many medals he has. I want this taken care of. He's making up these stories. I think maybe you're overreacting a little bit. He threatened to kill me last night. (laughs) How do you suggest I react to that? These wild accusations about me? Mr. Carr, is there something personal in this? I told you he was dangerous. What's it gonna take? Me in a body bag? And anything I seem to do makes it worse. I got a cop who wants my wife. They hear him lock the door. Do it! <laughs> Got our movie started in with that classic 20th Century Fox logo with the music and everything playing. I uh, just love these logos and intros and whatnot. And then the intro credits start to play as it says uh, Largo Entertainment and the music. It's got like a little little beat to it. It's got like this cop theme coming to it. And we, we hear a helicopter playing in the background as the music starts to pick up. And then we zoom in and we see uh, a couple cop cars. And then it might be an undercover cop or it might be someone that they pulled over. It looks like it might be a crime scene of some point in time. And uh, yeah, actually, we see someone laying on the ground, and they definitely don't look like they're moving. So we're just going to assume that it's a crime scene because they got the yellow tape and everything. So I'm sure he's not taking a nap. He could be taking a nap, but he's probably not. And then the helicopter just follows this one cop car that's taking off down the road. Sirens blazing. We got, you know, we got the setting and the time period. It's the 90s, and we got all those classic cars. I just love seeing, I just love anything that's set pretty much in the 90s or beforehand. It's just 
just a different feeling. Uh, better times, I guess. We probably probably looking back on the people that lived through it probably aren't saying it's better times i was a kid so i wouldn't know diff the difference but whatever also in the intro credits i just saw that it said line producer is gene levy i'm not sure if that's the same levy or not but i'm gonna have to look into that later and then uh we just zoom in we see this girl from the bird eyes view uh, just swimming in her pool just back and forth you know just being the creeper in the sky that's all we're being just a creeper in the sky and then we just have a still camera that's on this house from outside and it's day daytime and then the the time slowly starts to change and now it's nighttime we just see a guy walking his dog and then we start to go inside the house where the family is watching some tv and then as we're panning around the the home we see some pictures up on this little nightstand and we can see it's kurt russell's character michael carr and his wife karen carr who's played by madeline stowey i believe i said that last name right or the first name right both names right i don't know anyways and then we pan in and we see her asleep in bed watching tv as we then hear some sounds moving around and like some glass moving and that wakes her up and she's a little bit confused as to what's going on and then we see michael carr kurt russell himself in this like home office where he's i don't even know what the hell his job is but he's got like a old school computer set up he's got like a billboard up on the wall or a bulletin board up on the wall and then um karen comes in karen the cat being like michael i heard a noise michael she's like didn't you hear the noise michael michael didn't you hear he's like no i was on the phone with uh you know michael or, or some way i don't know who roger yeah he was on the phone with roger that's who it was then as you know he was originally saying it's probably just the wind or something and then as they're both staying in the office they hear a nurse sound he's like um i guess i'll go check that out you know and then she's like what why don't we go call the police he's like no no that's fine i got my golf club right here i'll just i'm just gonna go check it out don't worry don't worry if it's anything serious i'll come back from my driver don't worry i'm not gonna kill anyone with the putter okay it's fine i don't worry about it we don't see uh kurt russell moving around the house looking around checking the windows making sure everything's locked and they definitely have a very rich home because it looks very fucking fancy in this living room they even got like this looks like a wooden statue like head inside a glass shadow box for whatever reason hanging up on the wall uh not my aesthetic but whatever whatever works for you i guess the whole time this is going on karen stays inside his office just to with the cat of all things just because she wants to be safe with the cat i guess and then the phone fax machine starts going off and she kind of looks over like what's that ah, technology anyways then michael gets down to his kitchen area tries to turn on the light but the light just flickers and nothing comes on it's just like flickering like a horror movie essentially and he checks the the patio door it's locked everything seems to be fine on it so he closes the blind on that so then he's like ah everything must be fine so then he uh grabs a beer out of the fridge and like ah everything's fine and they have like a skylight and he notices the skylight open so then he's like oh shit someone is actually in here and he goes to move and uh, he drops his beer he's like yeah someone's in the house you better call the police and as uh karen's coming downstairs to talk to him the guy actually bursts through the door behind him and knocks him over and now we see like this chase scene as this guy is coming at uh karen who's trying to call the police and then michael just picks up his uh golf club and goes running at him but the black guy grabs uh a butcher knife essentially and puts that karen's throat i know i'm sorry i'm saying black guy because i just don't know the character's name so i can't i can't tell yeah break in artists i guess now we just see uh michael pleading with the guy just don't hurt i'll give you anything you want take my wallet take my nice fancy watch take my home computer upstairs whatever you want man just don't hurt her please take the cat take the cat if you want to then we see our breaking artist just like dragging her to the patio door unlocking the patio door dragging her outside where we hear her screaming and then i guess he throws her in the pool and then runs away from there i mean like it's just the water you were swimming in it earlier so it's not that big of a deal right and then we see a police car outside the home with the uh quote on it to serve and protect and then uh that's when we see the officers showing up to uh michael's home and it's officer roy cole played by roger e mosley and our man and um, Officer Pete Davis, played by Ray Liotta. And uh, as uh, Michael's explaining the story to the officers, uh, the wife starts coming down the stairs and Liotta just looks up and he's like, ooh, pretty pretty piece of candy and that's when they're explaining what happened about the knife to the throat and leo is like you okay do you need a doctor do you need some uh you need some help is there anything i can do is there anything and that's when the cat comes up and uh it's we find out the cat's name is tiny so leota picks up the cat he's like oh you're not a really good uh, watch cat now are you and uh car's like yeah it's pretty useless then they're looking at the skylight and cole puts his flashlight up at, uh, he's like yeah we'll come ha we'll have someone come in the morning to look at that so uh try not to disturb the area as it's like 10 feet up in the air i'm 
sure they're not going to get louder and just go up there, but you know, it's fun. It's, it is what it is. And then Karen's like, you know, I, I was told this was a safe neighborhood, and now you're saying this is happening a lot lately, so should we be worried? Should we move? And then she's like, do you guys want coffee? And they're like, sure, I guess. I'm not sure that's really a thing that even happens. Maybe in the 90s it was. But then uh, Leota stops her from stepping on a piece of glass. Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking out for you. Just You got to be careful there, sweetie. And then they mention about getting a gun, and then that's when Officer uh, Pete Davis, uh, Leota, he's like, you know, don't worry about getting a gun. You know, get an alarm system, get a dog. Don't get a gun because the wrong person always gets hurt. So you don't want a gun. And then we see the two officers in the car, and he's like, ah, nice people. And then Cole's like, I know what you're thinking. And uh, Leo is like, what? what? What am I thinking? And he just laughs it off. And then we see Michael and Karen in bed, and Karen's freaking out. She's like, oh, I don't think I can stay here. It's just so weird. I just don't think I can live here anymore. We have to move. We just have to sell the house and move. We can't, we can't, we can't live here anymore. It's fine. We're done. And then Karen starts freaking out some more. He's like, we can barely afford this place. We don't need this place. We just need to move out here and get out here. And Michael's like, I really like the place, though, to be honest with you. It's got, like, my home office and stuff. And I just don't want to move, to be honest with you. So let's just worry about it in the morning, and we'll get an alarm system and stuff. And then, uh, this is funny, because Michael's like, you know, we'll get a vicious guard dog. We'll get a pit bull, you know, with fangs and the big spiky collar and stuff, and he'll look scary. Of course, it's a pit bull that they always go for, but whatever. And we see, uh, Michael talking with one of his co-workers, you know, walking down the street. Uh, this is, uh, Roger Graham, played by Ken learner and we see this business guy showing up with a rose royce of all fucking things and um roger's like you know you did really good you were chasing him around with a putter i, I would have just gave up and just be like yeah take the wife i don't i don't, I don't need her anymore then we see this guy in the rose royce showing up and they're looking at a like a movie theater of some sort or a playhouse uh, but it's got like this aztec statues all over the place and it's got like the really fancy ceilings and it looks really fucking cool clearly been abandoned for a really long fucking time but it still looks really cool and as the three of them are standing there, one of their cell phones goes off, and they all look, be like, is this, is this me? Is that you? Is that me? I think it's me. Is that your care calling Michael to complain? He's like, you know, security people haven't actually showed up yet. The police actually haven't showed up yet. The dust for prints. And I'm just getting bored, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm going paranoid, to be honest with you. That's when Michael then says, you know, just call the police. Let's see what's going on. And then she says, I love you. And he responds with, I like that. What, what? Then we see Michael come home, and his house looks like it's a whole construction team working going to work on it because we have officers dusting for prints we have security team coming in to add things and then we see karen laughing and it's, she's talking to uh officer davis who's then just on like his off-duty undercover duty outfit because he's got like a leather jacket on he's like ah oh, this is the least i could do you know i just you know i just i just want to help out people and help out pretty ladies essentially then we have Michael being like, so, uh, what are they doing in the bathroom over there? He's saying, Dave's like, hey, these old houses are great. These door frames are fucking amazing. We're turning it into a fucking safe room for you. Don't worry about it. Deadlocks, everything. It's going to be a safe room. And then we see, uh, Michael and Davis looking at Davis's muscle car that he has outside. And that's when he's got, like, a security alarm as well. And Michael's like, so you ever think about consulting, like, working on security for, like, homes or, you know, say a club that I'm setting up downtown? And then I don't know where Karen's like, you're saying for dinner right like how many people ask an officer to stay for dinner but whatever it works then they're sitting down by the pool and this dog literally jumps over the fence and runs through and breaks a, a glass and michael car is like don't worry jack i'll get your dog he's like sorry man just uh, smells food and just jumped over the fence like that it's, he's crazy but so and then once cars michael car is gone uh davis opens up to karen a little bit she's like you know cops and marriage are really hard you know they usually don't work out and i'm surprised i'm talking this much to you because as a kid uh I really didn't talk as much at all. Uh, it's weird that I'm opening up to you so much. And we see uh, Davis leaving him. Michael welcomes to his car and he's like, yeah, you're doing a lot to help out Karen. He's like, yeah, she'll bounce back. How about you? Have you bounced back? And uh, Karen's like, you know what? I just, you know, I can't think about it. Be honest with you. You know, I felt helpless. You know, just this guy taking my wife and, you know, it just, it just feels like it kicked the living shit out of me. And then uh, Dave's like, yeah, you'll bounce back. Don't worry about it, man. It's it's, it's fine. You did a lot. You got balls. You know, you, you took a putter against the guy. <laughs> That's when, uh, when Davis is leaving. He's like, you know what, Michael? I think you'd enjoy coming on a ride along. That's when he actually has to explain to Michael what ride along is. He's like, yeah, I guess I could come out a ride along. Hopefully we're not in the ghetto and I get shot because that's probably your plan to get
get me out of the fucking picture. And then it's like the next day we see Michael signing some waiver forms pretty much saying like, your wife can't come after us if the city kills you or anything. And then David's like, ah, he's fine. He's with us. Don't worry about it. And then they are driving. It's now nighttime. And they see this girl driving, this blonde girl driving a Jeep and no doors on it. Just, you know, enjoying the weather. And uh, David's like, oh, oh, look, do you think she's a real blonde? So they decide to pull her over for whatever reason, but it's fine. Nothing really happens with that situation other than David's going up to talk to her and he's like, officer, was I driving too fast for you? I'm like, no, bitch, you're fine. Don't worry about it. And we see the three of them stopping out this, like, barista, burrito operation. And they walk in and Maria, the cook's like, ah, he knows him right, right off the bat. Gets her order pretty much fastest than anyone ever see a fucking order come through. Because Cole knocks on the window saying what they want. And then the next thing you know, it's fucking ready. And they sit down and open the food up. And Michael opens up his food and looks at it. And he's like, I, you know what? Um, I ate before I came out this morning, which was probably like 12 hours ago. I'm still actually kind of full, and I don't want to eat what looks to be slop. And Cole's like, try it. It's the best in the city. Go and enjoy it. He's like, nah, you know what? I'm actually pretty full. I'm good. And then we see them showing up to this home where that incident's happening. And we see inside the window, there's like three people fighting and yelling and screaming. And the the wife or the girlfriend is pretty fucking pissed off but it sounds like maybe her boyfriend hit her in the face not really too sure what's going on but then michael's sitting in the car and he sees a little kid sneaking out the back window the little kid goes running across the road while it's nighttime and there's a truck coming down the road so michael then runs out and grabs the kid and saves his life so he doesn't become you know roadkill and then we see them getting ready to take the guy out of the home and he literally clocks the wife and pushes the officer back i forget which one of them was i think it might have been uh davis and then we just see them tackle this guy which is i believe the guy from dumb and dumber or one of those movies i know i've seen him from a movie but i can't find him actually in the this like the cast and crew so i'm not really sure which movie he's from i didn't do a deep dive though because i'm doing this on the fly at eight o'clock in the morning but it's it's fine and now we're at the point where they drop cole off at the police station and uh and david's like come on michael get up in the front seat we got one more errand to run and then we see them at this uh rundown place and davis is pulling out this guy and pushes him up against the police car he's like come out and id this motherfucker and somehow davis hunt down the guy who broke into uh, michael's house that's when davis throws the guy up against the wall he's like you break into my friend's house did you scare my friend's pretty wife do you want me to kick your fucking ass that's when then davis is like you know i'm gonna let my friend kick your fucking ass you're not gonna be able to do anything about it and michael's like what are you serious um you know i know i said i wanted to rip his heart out and stuff but i was like just the heat of the moment and just talk and uh I'm, i don't know what to do right now davis you're, fr- you're throwing me on the spot here but that's when then davis pretty much throttled the guy it's like you walk with me you're not going to resist me right you're not going to complain at all right you're not going to try and come back at us right and the guy's like yeah 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 yeah. that's when then davis gives him his, like his billy club sick he's like come on beat the guy you don't even have to put your actual hands on him just beat the crap out of him he put a knife to karen's throat he's like no man I'm, I'm not doing it so the guy then tries to run away so davis throws the billy club at him knocks him to the ground and then davis literally gets on top of him and just starts caving in his face with the billy stick he's not dead yet but he's pretty fucked up and then michael's like come on davis davis let's let's stop please please let's stop that's when he then finally gets home and then karen's like so how was your night it's like, oh, a guy weird night to be honest with you um you know went on a few calls we dropped uh, cole off at the station and then uh pete had a little surprise for me uh he caught the guy that broke into the house and she's like oh he's in jail he's like ah no most likely a hospital because uh davis beat the shit out of him and i uh, was throwing around his power and then karen's like well i'm just glad it's over with and that's when then uh michael's you know being very scared and karen's like so you, are you sure you're okay he's like to be honest with you i think he's uptight a little wound too tight and i don't want him around here anymore to be honest with you and then karen's like well what do you mean you're just being you're just being silly he's our friend we should give him a chance he's literally just worried about his family and then karen's like you know what i, I just don't understand why you have sympathy for the guy who just put a knife to my throat and tried to kill me even though you didn't really try to kill her, you know, you took her hostage for about like five seconds, but that's besides the point, I guess. And then it's like the next day and Karen's taking a swim in the pool and then I don't know where she comes, like puts her head out of the pool and Officer Davis is just sitting there or standing there. He's like, sorry to scare you. I just wanted to come over and talk to you. Can I talk to you for a minute? She's like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And he's like, you really should put a lock on that gate. She's like, I don't think you came here to discuss the gate, did you? And he's like, no. She asked him what happened. He's like, well, when I caught him, you know, he pushed me over and took you know went running off so i had to chase after him and catch him like ah michael didn't say it that way he's like ah you know you you see cops on tv shows and it's not really portrayed the same way you know it's it's different if you're there 
in the live act. And he starts going on about how he goes on about the story about his first time out on the job. I was trying to arrest this kid that was on drugs and there was some girl there and apparently she shot him in the chest and then he shows her his bullet wound in his chest. He's like, I'm sorry about what happened. It's just, you know, I'm just doing my job and I, I don't want to get shot again, essentially. So I'm going to jump the guy and if I have to use force, I'm going to use force. Let me see uh, Michael at his job and they got like the setup for the, the new club that they're opening that I thought was going to be a movie theater, but apparently they got it all all the chairs all the seating and it's like a giant dance floor and there's like a dining area and it's pretty much them setting up a, a potential party to try and get investors to try and pay into the club that they want to set up and of course davis out of nowhere shows up in a suit just you know walking around checking out the environment and whatnot and we have michael saying the joke that he heard in the police car about you know the voice or someone else and they jump off the tower who who hits first who cares and uh michael is getting ready to finish the joke and davis finishes it and michael's like uh well, what what are you doing here he's like i oh, know i was just you know i was just stopping in checking in see how things are going that's when davis starts saying how you know you should move the entrance to the alleyway get people to line up to come in that way because the marquee's too open and you can't really secure it that well and michael's like why don't you go get a drink uh pete and he's like oh yeah I, sh I will and michael's watching and pete pretty much just straight v lines right for karen and he's like yeah yeah we take security really really uh seriously Seriously, around here. Um, are we done with this meeting? And then we have Pete and uh, Michael at the bar just having a drink. And I, Michael's like, you know, I just want to get something straight here. Uh, I want you to leave. He's like, well, why did you invite me here? And he's like, I didn't invite you here. I told you about the club. I didn't actually invite you. And he's like, Davis, like, why are you being so uptight? Like, is it because of the stuff that happened last night? Because you're on the the ride long. You know, nothing seriously happened. It's fine. And Davis like, what? Why would? It, what kind of friend would I be if I didn't take care of you? You know, I'm just trying to take care of you and Karen. He's like, you're not my friend. Just, you know, you need to just leave us alone. That's when David's like, what are you going to do? Call the cop? And Michael's like, fuck you. Just get out of the club. And uh, David's like, you know, lower your voice. Just lower your voice. The pigeons are watching, you know. I don't want you losing your uh, investment here. And then as uh, Davis is waiting for his car to show up, uh, we see everyone else having their toast inside to, you know, good health and a good club and whatnot. And the whole time, Davis is just standing at the doorway looking in as a creeper. <laughs> we just cut to Davis in his police outfit as he's sitting at this outside table, just sipping some coffee, just looking all sad and confused as to what he's doing with his life. So then to uh, cheer himself up, he goes and sits underneath a drain bridge with a hooker. And we come to find out he apparently uh, plays with this hooker a lot because she's like i'm glad you called i've been thinking about you lately and uh, i've been missing you and then she's looking at his wound in his chest and she's like uh you get shot or something he's like it's a fishing accident she's like gosh fish have guns now and then out of nowhere he just flips out loses his shit on the uh prostitute pushes her out of the car and she starts freaking out because she doesn't know where she is and he's like well i guess that's your fucking problem now isn't it then we cut to michael who's sitting inside a classroom discussing to the kids why he wanted to be a cop and what made him want to do what he's just doing and inside this classroom is also karen so i'm not sure if she's a teacher and i missed that point somewhere or not but oh well then like after that stuff's all gone apparently she's a teacher of some sort anyways the kids are leaving they're outside and he stops forward to karen he's like i just want to say thank you for letting me be like talking to the kids and what's uh, whatnot and then she's like i just want to say sorry for what michael said and he's like yeah i was really thrown off he invited me over there and then kicked me out like i would never show up if that was gonna happen and you know i hope i didn't do anything wrong karen she's like no no uh you didn't do anything wrong it's, it's michael it's definitely michael he's the problem and then uh out of nowhere they said like, can i just take you for a bite to eat we'll just go to the little diner and yeah karen goes to the little diner with him and she's like so is everyone here a cop he's like no nah, we just busted this place not too long ago let me find davis you know trying to ask some questions about you know how karen and michael got together and why they're together essentially we find out that karen's dad had a gambling problem where people were showing up in the middle of the night to like take the cars and this and that and she's like yeah everything always came easy to michael and he's like is that why you married him he's like well no i married him because i i love him and Dave's like it's all the easy things that come to michael were you one of them because uh no man deserves that much good fortune and you should never feel unsafe you know you need a real man like me but no he's just going on about like how if you ever need anyone to talk to you you're feeling scared you need a real friend to talk to a real real friend to talk to you who's totally not going to try sleeping with you uh i'm i'm there for you let's see the shower scene at the police station and Cole's like, so how was your afternoon? He's like, yeah, yeah, it was good. It was, it was fine. And uh, Cole's like, so uh, you and Mrs. Carr getting along fine? And Cole's clue, totally not cool with the whole situation that's going on. He's like, I know what you're up to. You're going to cause some fucking issues. 
And we see Michael and Karen having dinner at this fancy restaurant with Roger and one other business person. And then next thing you know, they're coming out of the restaurant and there's a boot on their car. And then they go to like the DMV or wherever, uh, wherever they hold the car, the impound lot, whatever. And apparently they have, they're saying that he has $600 worth of tickets on his car. And he's like, uh, what, what are you talking about? I've never had any tickets. And he goes to pay with his second car, which I forgot to mention at the diner. He, he went to go pay with his first card and it got declined and he goes to pay with this card and it's apparently over max so we can only assume what's happening now and they keep chalking up oh, it's just a computer just a computer it's, it's weird then i don't know where uh michael and karen start getting freaky on the bathroom floor and then the whole alarm system starts going off so then uh, michael runs right to his duffel bag and grabs a gun and locks himself into the washroom while he locks karen into the washroom and goes out the other door and locks it he's like you stay here i'm gonna go figure out what's going on with my pistol and of course, the whole time that the alarm's going off, it's a dark and stormy night. And then the alarm just stops and we hear uh, footsteps running up the stairs. And there's a knock on the door. He's like, Karen, it's all right. And we come to find out the cat knocks something over that caused the alarm to go off. Mm, good alarm system. Guess you're not supposed to have any cats. Probably not going to make that thing any easier. And now he's in hot water because uh, apparently he made the decision of having the gun without talking to Karen about it. And she doesn't like guns at all. So now she's pissed off at him and there's no more freaky time on the washroom floor. Then we see them having freaky time in the bed and off in the distance at the doorway we see davis standing there with his gun and flashlight and then he turns his flashlight on and scares the shit out of them then he runs down and out of the stairway and to the front door and michael chases after him he's like what the fuck are you doing in here he's like i was just responding to your alarm and he's like i didn't know it was a false alarm he's like yeah sure just like the boot on my car and my credit card's being all maxed out yeah it's all just a fucking false alarm huh you probably tripped to yourself and cole opens up the front door he's like uh everything okay here he's like yeah it's just uh, just a false alarm. I did. I didn't know. I was, I'm embarrassed that I walked in and saw you guys doing it. But I'm just gonna go now. Then we see uh, Michael at the police station talking to the captain, trying to discuss the situation with Davis. Be like, you know, he's pretty much uh, he's a sicko and he's a psychopath. And yeah, sure, uh, we liked him at first, but now you know he walked in while we're having sex and stuff. And um, captain's like, you know, look on the paperwork. He's like, yeah, I was just looking at it at the order. And yeah, he was checking out uh, the alarm going off that was off by your security company so the captain's like you know you have no evidence to go up against davis you know he's got a lot of awards against him he's a very decorative officer you know we're going to do this investigation but we're going to do it properly and we just need to figure out what's going on and i you know i don't want an unstable officer on the floor or on the on the the streets but we need to do this the professional way and do it the proper way to figure out what's actually going on here then we see Michael meeting up with Roger, and apparently the person that was going to go through with the deal on the club is now backing out Lori, uh, because apparently Davis was calling him, asking all these questions, so now Lori's getting all nervous and being like, you know, I think you're under an investigation, so I don't want to go into business with someone who might be in the wrong side of the law, so I'm going to pull my finances out of this club. And that's, you know, starting to get really on Michael's nerves. Then we see uh, Michael meeting uh, Davis at this, like, lookout spot that's looking over the city he's like you know i'm glad you're meeting me here so we can talk uh i don't know what i did to uh, make this all happen but uh, i'm sorry maybe we can just have this as water on the bridge and the whole time while michael's talking uh davis is just looking out you know off into the distance not really listening to him at all and then he pulls a, a envelope he's like he's like what's that he's like five thousand dollars just leave my investors alone and then david's like what you're gonna try and bribe me mikey he's like what's going on here he's like i don't I'd call it what you want i just want you to leave my investors alone so i can go on with my job no <laughs> no where david's like you know when karen met you she thought you were different than your her gambling father you know while well, karen needs to feel protected when those coyotes come charging out of the brush and that's when michael's like you stay the fuck away from her and then he gets clocked in the stomach and then david's like you're gonna assault a police officer you're gonna a nice civilized man like you you're gonna assault a police officer michael that's when michael's like are you gonna arrest me and then davis pulls out his gun he's like i could kill you right now and they would never find you or figure out who did it then we see his parents at the school and then michael pulling uh karen out of class and he's like so what's going on here karen what's what's going on uh because pete knows some things i'm a little bit confused what's going on here karen and then karen's like you're being crazy mike what what's going on here he's like well, you know what? He put he pulled a gun on me and put it towards my head. So uh, what do you, what do you think is going on here, Karen? Because uh, he he thinks you want him and he wants you. So what what's going on here, Karen? You're you're talking to him about us and our marriage. So what's going on here, Karen? 
And he's like, I told you already that this man is dangerous. What's it going to take for me to be in a body bag? And she's just like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to listen to you now, I guess. Maybe for the part time, but at least for a little bit. Then we see uh, Davis meeting up with Cole. Well, he's not really meeting up with him. He's kind of like pretty much talking where he lives. He's like, hey, Officer Cole, um, I met with your partner. I tried to work things out and um, I need your help. He's like, don't you know to leave things out of there and just leave him alone? And he's like, he's playing with you. And he's like, uh, he tried to kill me last night, Officer Cole. And Cole's just like, what? What? Is when then Cole's finally like, okay, you know, let's let's come in. Let's discuss this and see what we can do. And then we cut to Davis and Cole jogging together. And he's like, he doesn't understand. He doesn't love her. I could take better care of her. I'm the man for her. And Cole's like, what, what's going on here? You know, nothing's going to happen between you and her. She's married to him. She loves him. She's just a fancy in your head. And Davis like, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, Cole. And they're on the same hill that they had the meeting at together. And Cole's like, tell me what you were doing with him up here last night tell me you didn't have a gun in his head in his face tell me you didn't threaten to fucking kill him and that's when cole's like you know you either come forward with this or you know you stop doing what you're doing or i'm gonna go to up top i'm gonna tell them what's the fuck's going on because i'm not dealing with this shit i'm not gonna have a crazy cop on the field cole pretty much tells davis to go have coffee or drink and be like you know it's gonna get better it's gonna be fine just go talk it out with his drink everything will be better don't worry about it just stop being fucking crazy then it's that night and we see uh uh, Davis and Cole show up to that little burrito place and Davis looks over and sees Leon the Mr. Clean guy making a drug deal with a taxi cab driver and that's when Leon starts running away because Davis tells him to freeze and we see this guy just bolting down this fucking alleyway and next thing you know we see the police car coming after him. It's like a homeless alley there's like a bunch of furniture all over the place and Davis is driving the car and he's pretty much just ramming into fucking everything to the point where a tire almost backs out in front of him and he almost hits it but he has to swerve to miss it for a reason leon runs literally right into his apartment building it runs right into the washroom so he's trying to flush all the pills and they're beating on the door being like come on leon open up and he opens up a drawer and there's a bunch more pills and they break the door down and he's like i just i'm just carrying this box don't worry about it there's nothing in the box don't look in the box guys please don't look in the box and then we have uh cole you know checking leon for weapons and whatnot and as we see he's around the corner doing that we see davis putting on some gloves, shutting the apartment door, and then taking his gun out of his, you know, holster on his ankle. Then he walks over to the window, pulls the blind down, and we see Davis pointing the gun at both of them. And Leon's freaking out like, what? No, don't shoot me. And he actually shoots Cole and kills Cole. And Leon's freaking out. He's like, what are you doing? Wait, wait, what are you doing? And then like, Davis just starts thro- throttling him and being like, take the gun and run. Just take the gun. And so when he- Leon finally grabs the gun and goes to run for the front door that I think is locked at this point in time, uh, Davis grabs L- uh, Cole's gun and shoots Leon and be like, you shot my partner, Leon. Now you gotta die. So he's essentially just setting up the bad cop situation where, you know, setting up the crime scene in favor for himself. And he's just standing over Cole watching the light go out of his eyes and davis just is like to cole and he's like you ain't going upstairs to talk to anyone sorry buddy it is what it is and then he puts uh cole's gun back in his hand which doesn't really make sense because like cole is on uh, like this apartment's an l shape so cole's on one side of the l shape while leon's at the other shape and they're both dead up against various spots so how would that work out i don't know i'm not a crime scene detective but uh it does make sense to me and then we just see uh cole finally uh die and then we see the crime scene going on we see the body bags being stretchered out and and Davis is like, you know, I went around back and Cole went in the front and, you know, it's uh, Cole got shot. But apparently uh, Cole shot him before uh, he died and that's how Leon died. And that's how they, apparently the situation worked out. Makes no sense, but it is what it is. And then we have Ray doing his, or uh, Pete doing his um, fake crying. I don't even know why I said Ray. There's no one even in the fucking movie named Ray. But that's just how my brain goes some days. Then we cut to Michael in his office. He's looking out at the pool and we see a bunch of agents sneaking around his back backyard and he's like uh i'm not sure what's going on and then he goes to uh call uh the officers or maybe cole i believe it was and he's like um i don't know what's going on but there's a setup going on and there's agents all over the place i'm a little bit confused right now and apparently the doorbell rings and karen an- answered and apparently they have a search warrant to search for narcotics and they have half the police force 
doing it. I'm not sure that's the real thing, but whatever. And then they started smashing every fucking thing in the house. Like smashing vases. You could have just looked in the top of it, but that's fine. Whatever. And it was apparently they, they had uh, clues that this whole house is a giant narcotics operation. And then, of course, you have two cops coming down the stairs with a bunch of narcotics. And he's like, surprise, surprise. Michael, you're under arrest for the... Uh, possession of drugs shocking shocking huh that's when then uh michael carr is introduced to special agent noble he's like so if you uh give us the information on who your connections are we'll you know make this simple and easy and you'll get things situated he's like i got nothing to tell you i got nothing to tell you at all so then we see a uh, car being taken through the jail area and all the people in the jail cells are just you know staring and be like "Ooh, fresh white boy fresh fancy looking white boy then we see uh, Roger meeting as a uh, legal counsel with uh, Michael. And he's like, I need to know what your finances are, exact finances. He's like, well, I put everything into that party to try and get Lur- Lurie to, you know, sign on. He's like, I got like $2,200 left. And Michael's like, you know, I'm only here because this crazy cop is trying to get with my wife and wants me out of the picture. He's like, you know, this, Roger's like, this is way over my head. I don't know what's going on. I just, I, I don't know what to do to help you. And that's when Kyra's like, you know, Cole, Cole knows what's going on. I talk to him and he he can help us out and then that's when roger's like cole's dead he, he died in the line of duty you know that's when then michael's like you know he's not gonna stop until i'm dead too because he just killed his partner because he knew the partner knew about everything that's going on you need to get me out of here or i'm going to be dead and then we see them at the hearing where Case is being um, accused of the possession of, I think, cocaine for the distribution charges and whatnot. And then there's another case thing that comes up saying that uh, Carr apparently played a, a similar case in Austin, Texas about eight years ago. And they're like, what What? What are you talking about? And we come to find out that it wasn't him, but he took an investor out of town and they got arrested. And it was actually the investor who had the, the little thing of blow. And apparently he took a deal to try and save the situation because it was in his car and and now the bail is set to $250,000. And they're not going to be able to bail him out for that much. Then as Carr is being escorted out of that area, we actually see Davis staying in the back watching as everything's going on. And as Mike is sitting in his cell, Davis comes up. He's like, hey, you, you having trouble making bail there, Mike? Mike's a little tight right now, isn't it? Don't worry about it, though, Mike. Karen's all alone now, so I'll make sure she's safe. Don't worry about it, though. And Davis is like, I know what Karen needs. And isn't it her happiness that we both want? So don't worry about it, Mike. She'll be taken care of. And then as Karen's in bed, just, you know, laying there, she hears the door open. And she hears someone coming up the steps. And it's her friend Penny and not the cop. And we see the house is completely still trash at this point in time. Uh, she's just like, oh, I don't care to clean up. It's a mess. It's a write-off. It's it's fine. It's what, it is what it is. And we actually find out that Penny's going to stick around until Michael's home. And uh, Karen's like, you know, that's going to be a while. She's like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just take take some time to rest and then we see penny in the the kitchen getting ready to feed the cat and the whole time davis is standing outside the door and he's like sorry did you mean to scare you penny um i, I brought some groceries to try and help him out because i figured she didn't have time to go get groceries with everything going on he's like hey, can i just bring the groceries in how about i just give them to you i, I gotta get going to work and she's just standing there staring at him he's like ah i'm not too uh, popular around here now am i penny huh all right well i'm just gonna leave the groceries on the ground here you look great by the way um I'll see you later, though. Bye-bye. And, of course, Silly Penny, she thinks he's gone. Uh, she bypasses the alarm to turn it off and grabs the groceries. And as soon as she grabs the groceries, we see someone grab her wrist. And we can only assume who that is. And we see uh, Michael finally being able to go take his phone call that he's been asking for for the last, God, seems like fucking hours here now. Of course, we see uh, Karen's in the shower. The phone's not ringing at all. And, of course, the dispatch lady's like, I'm sorry, sir, the, the phone's off the hook. I can't do anything about it. I can, you know, let the company know know something's going on but i can't do anything about it and then she gets up karen gets out of the shower and goes down the stairs he's like oh it smells so good down here penny you're doing a great job we actually see it's uh davis making dinner or whatever my breakfast i'm assuming it's dinner and she's like where's penny uh i told her to go home she's just gonna be third wheel i didn't think it'd be a big deal about it and then she uh karen's looking around she sees the phone off the hook and he's like ah, i left the phone off the hook just because i want you to sleep i want you to rest up i didn't want any distractions and then he's like you know i shouldn't i know i shouldn't be here i know you're upset well let's just stop kidding each other okay we know there's a connection between each other i know you like me and i like you a lot too so i'm you know i'm i'm trying to be a good friend but there's more there and then she's like you know i'm very tired i just need some time alone he's like i know come on let's let's sit down i know what's scaring you i don't have to be a copy more i can get a new job i can get like a normal job a clean job 
where I'm not, you know, in danger. I know that's what's scaring you. I know you being with me is scary because I, I'm carrying a gun. I could die. So I just get like a normal job, like a factory or Walmart or Kmart. You know, something simple, you know, something where you don't have to worry about me. And that's when he takes his badge out and his gun out and puts it in the drawer. He's like, you know, I feel good about this. I actually, I got to go finish cooking though. So dinner's ready. That's when uh, Karen's like, you know, I, I'm, I forgot about Tiny. I don't like leaving the cat outside for a long time because I don't want anything to happen. And she goes to set the front alarm door to open like up the door to try and get Tiny inside. That's when we hear Tiny meowing in the closet. So she grabs him and then as she's grabbing him, Penny's arm falls down from the shelf that's up in the closet and we find her dead in the closet with a bag suffocating her. And she, she, she done. She dead. Dead like dinner. That's when Davis comes over. He's like, you okay? You, you fine? Davis locks the door back up, sets the alarm back up and everything. He's like, come on. I know what you need. You're, you're just a little nervous. It's fine. And then we cut and see Roger in his car sitting outside the police station. And we see Michael coming out. He's like, move over. Come on. I'm driving. Put your seatbelt on. Let's go. We got stuff to do. Then we see uh, Davis trying to give Karen a massage. Being like, oh, you keep all your tension up here in the shoulders. As he's doing it on the kitchen table of all things. can not find a couch or something, something somewhere else. I don't know, kitchen table works, I guess. And then he starts undoing the back of her shirt, being like, I feel so lucky being here with you. Just tell me how much you love me, because guess what? I'll still love you more. And she's just like, Pete, just uh, stop. I don't feel too too pretty right now. Um, can I go upstairs and put something nice on for you to make myself feel a little bit more prettier and, you know, stuff? And he pretty much just stands there and kind of smirks about it. Now she's going upstairs. She's like, I'll call you when I'm, I'm ready, okay? And he's like, don't be long. Ah, uh, guess if you're too long, I'm coming up to get you because I don't trust your lying bitch ass. And of course, in the, the moment of the night, Michael's driving the BMW, speeding, runs through a red light. Of course, there's a motorcycle officer that's sitting off on the side. So then a, a cop chase uh, is going to assume start there. That's when we then see Karen searching Michael's duffel bag looking for the gun. And then Davis comes up behind and he's like, Karen, you looking for this right here? And she's like, oh, you read my mind. I hate the damn thing. I just I just want you to dispose of it and get rid of it. And he's like, oh, I, I thought you were going to get changed, though. And then we see uh, Michael take the car down a side road or side street. And then he, he gets out and runs out of the car. And he has Roger get out on the driver's side as he's got his hands up in there he's like don't shoot i'm a lawyer please don't shoot me i didn't mean to drive away i didn't mean to speed don't shoot me please i thought maybe a good plan would be just to like lead the officer right to the house that probably would have been a good plan but you know whatever you know what you're doing there michael now at some point uh, pete puts the gun behind his back and his, his belt and of course we have pete and karen kissing making out and she, you know she's filling up and she grabs the gun from his back and he's pointing at him and she's like get the fuck away from me you're crazy and pete's like you know you're not gonna kill me you're not gonna shoot me and then she goes to cock the gun and shoot and there's no bullets in it. he's like fuck her you would have shot me and he's like yeah shoot again come on you think i'd actually give you a loaded fucking gun that's when he then throws her down on the bed and pretty much just calls her a useless fucking horror and he's like you know i'm just gonna treat you like one karen because that's what you are karen and then the home alarm starts going off actually sorry my bad it's actually not the home alarm it's actually his car alarm because someone smashed the the passenger window out on his car and he's all pissed off now so then he handcuffs her to the bathtub i think it's a bathtub it's got like the side railing on it it might be the bathtub i'm not too sure davis runs outside to look at his car and he's not too happy you know passenger window's all fucked up now and that's fair then we hear some running up the stairs and she's screaming no and it's actually michael showing up and he's trying to pry the bar off this fucking hot tub jacuzzi that they got but nothing's happening it's not barging at all but then he somehow rips the towel bar off like the the towel holder bar off and uses that as a pry bar to get the other bar open and to get the, the handcuffs finally off that bar and now they're trying to hide inside their own home essentially then out of nowhere davis breaks through like a side door and tackles michael down to the ground starts choking him out and then we see them fighting each other in like the kitchen living room area and one of them goes flying through the the, the living room table Karen tries to go out the front door, and that's when uh, Davis comes over to try and punch her. And then Michael comes over, throws him up against the wall, and tries to gu gouging out his eyes of all fucking things. Then they start fighting in the kitchen, and Michael puts uh, Davis's face through the glass window on like the cabinet, and that pisses Davis off pretty much. So he grabs a frying pan that has some mushrooms in it and literally smashes him in the face with it. And then the phone goes off, and he picks it up, and he's like, yeah, this is Michael Carr. Uh, thank you for calling. Yeah, I was, I was swinging a golf club, and it went through the patio window. It's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. As he's got a gun pointed at Michael, who's on the ground now, being like, oh, uh, yeah, this 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 sucks. And that's when he gives the password for the alarm system, and he's like, no, I, I didn't change the password. <clears throat> and Michael's on the ground. He's like, yeah, I did. 
That's when Davis like, what's the password? Give me the password, Michael. He's like, figure it out yourself, dickhead. It's seven letters. We see Karen locks herself in the safe room inside the washroom. And Davis is like, come on, Karen. You got to open up the door or Davis is going to die. I see he's ramming Davis's or uh, ramming Kara's head into the door. That's where Michael's like, don't open the door, honey. He's going to kill us both. So don't do it. If he kills me, he kills me. Don't worry about it. Just don't open the door, please. Well, Karen does open the door, but she's got this giant crystal diamond in her hand and she literally smashes uh davis in the face with it and then michael fights back and next thing we know we see davis falling down the spiral staircase and landing on the floor and looking motionless and maybe dead probably not though then we have this like soft music starting to play as they're standing over his body and i can maybe assume that he might be dead seeing that the floor is now filling up with blood that's coming out of his skull but anyways uh car goes over with the gun and starts poking him in the back being like you dead you dead hey are you dead And they get the front door open and Karen goes outside to sit on the porch. And then we hear the cat running down the stairs and she looks back at Michael. And then out of nowhere, Davis just stands up. He's like, what are you going to do, Michael? And that's when uh, Michael starts unloading the gun into uh, Davis's chest. And he's dead now, finally. Then we just have Michael and Karen look at each other just, you know, about everything that just happened. And then we just hear the sirens coming off in the background as uh, Michael picks up the fat cat. And, you know, that's that's their happy little family. And that's the end of the movie. And the outro credits start to play as the cop cars all start to show up there's a helicopter flying overhead with the spotlight going and they're just sitting on their front porch just you know confused as to what the fuck just happened in their life and then roger shows up too being like what the hell happened here guys and we just you know have all the cops rushing in there's like fucking five cop cars at least the helicopter going overhead and yeah the movie's over uh that was a really good movie the first time i ever watched it i definitely highly highly recommend it if you're a kurt russell ray liotta fan definitely watch it it's um it's really good a lot of action a lot of suspense and it's a good thriller uh on the rotten scale out of 10 i'm giving it a solid eight because i i enjoyed it a lot so definitely highly recommend it. it's on tubi so go check it out there which brings us to our movie we have to pick for next week we're gonna watch a movie back in the horror movies uh one that i picked up that i have never actually seen i thought i've seen them all but clearly i haven't uh we're gonna watch leatherface texas chainsaw massacre because i've never actually seen that one and it looks stupid as hell but i want to watch it anyway it's just so I can say I've actually watched it, seeing I've been playing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game a lot now. You can definitely check that out over on Twitch, and there's YouTube videos as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely go check out the Twitch channel, at Typhon Sign, where you can see me playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre a couple times a night, or a couple times a week, I should say. As always, though, make sure to check out the outro band, The Blood Opera, trial based horror band. Uh, their music plays at the end of each and every episode, not almost every episode of the podcast. Definitely go check them out. All their links will be down below, but you can find them on Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and I'm sure there's other spots, maybe threads. I don't know. I, I, I'm i not searching out a lot of people on threads yet. Uh, I don't even know if it's a thing anymore. So let me know down in the comments below if threads is even a site anymore that people are using. But as always, make sure to check out all my links that are down below as well. And, you, you know, follow me at Typhon Sign pretty much on anything and everything. We've got the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, threads, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, TikTok. But like I said earlier, YouTube being the main thing because we're pushing that channel. we got the weekly gaming videos coming out every Wednesday. We have... Uh, old episodes of the podcast coming out and we have the various shorts and our videos and whatnot so definitely go check that out and until next time i'll talk to you guys all later peace